For more on the day's big news, here's our hockey insider, Darren Dreger. Dregs, it looked like things were really close at last year's NHL trade deadline. It looked like Jacob Markstrom was on his way to New Jersey, and then things fell apart, and Markstrom was not happy about it, Dregs. I remember he said it could have been handled a lot differently from the people up top. Okay, so now it is done. He is going to Jersey. How did this finally all come together? Well, a lot of work by Tom Fitzgerald with the New Jersey Devils and management of the Calgary Flames. And let's throw Pat Morris, who represents Jacob Markstrom, into that equation as well. A lot of parties were involved in this process. But I'm going to be specific here for a moment, Gino. So as we have this conversation Wednesday afternoon, I'm going to take you back to Tuesday, game day, game five of the Stanley Cup final. And I'm doing my due diligence, doing my prep work for the game. But in the meantime, as an insider... I'm also trying to keep tabs on some of the bigger stories, and this is a huge story. So I checked in with my New Jersey sources at 2.31 p.m. Eastern Time yesterday. And I was told, nope, all quiet with Jacob Markstrom and the Calgary Flames. <laughs> so then it got less quiet after that, <laughs> Gino. It got real busy in the afternoon. And the heavy lifting of the negotiations really took place last night to a point where it wasn't wrapped up. When Jacob Markstrom, because of his time zone difference, said, you know what, I'm going to bed. Let me know how this all plays out in the morning. <laughs> Got up this morning. A deal had been agreed to between the Calgary Flames uh, and the New Jersey Devils. And Jacob Markstrom waived his uh, no trade clause and is now happy to be part of the organization in New Jersey. Okay, so Markstrom's happy. The Devils are happy. The Flames are happy. But... The Leafs and the Sens, who both desperately want some help in goaltending, are left out in the cold. Did they get close to making something happen with Markstrom, and where do they go from here? No, I don't think that either side felt that they were really close. And I'm talking about Toronto, and I'm talking about Ottawa. You know, does Steve Stales, the general manager of the Senators, have interest in an upgrade in goal? 100%. You know, was he talking to Craig Conroy in Calgary about Markstrom? Yes, he was. Likewise, Brad Trilving and the Toronto Maple Leafs. But I don't know that Toronto or Ottawa felt like they were close on anything with Markstrom. But that doesn't take away from the reality. But both those clubs would like to, again, upgrade the position of goal. Uh, but it also then goes back to what does Jacob Markstrom want? I think he was intrigued by the possibility of potentially getting traded to Toronto. But I also understand and believe that New Jersey was his first choice. So that's all been settled. So Brad Trilliming, as we know, will continue to make his calls. The goalie market remains very, very intriguing. Gino, I think what also kind of encouraged the deal between Calgary and New Jersey was the fact that Craig Conroy in Calgary knew that Tom Fitzgerald in New Jersey was more than kicking tires on some of the other potential goaltenders in play, like Elinus Olmark of the Boston Bruins. So Conroy wasn't going to get caught holding the bag, even though Jacob Markstrom is a very good and elite level NHL goaltender. So he didn't want to, you know, wait too long and poke the bear, as they say. So he took the best deal available, and that's from the New Jersey Devils. So I think that Steos in Ottawa, Trilliving in Toronto are going to continue to work at it. Maybe you look at the next year. I'm watching Anthony Stolarz, who came in in relief of Sergei Brabovsky in the Stanley Cup final. He's an unrestricted free agent at the end of this year. Maybe he's a good fit in Toronto. They need a 1A goaltender who can push Joseph Wohl a little bit. Uh, I'm thinking of, of Larry Brossois, as Jamie Noodles McLennan likes to call him. I mean, he was an exceptional <laughs> backup goaltender with Connor Hellebuck in uh, Winnipeg. So, look, if, if that's the next tier, then maybe that's the tier that Toronto is looking at. But I do get the sense that Ottawa would like a goaltender that's a bit more proven. All right, Drake, let's get back to the Calgary Flames. Where do they go now? We know now they're officially in a rebuild as they move Markstrom. Uh, they've got Dan Vladar, has got a year left on his contract. They've got Dustin Wolf, who's a young kid. They're trying to work into the rotation. Both of them had, Wolf had 17, Vladar had 20 starts last year. What direction do you think they go in that right now? Well, they're, they're trying to bolster their defense, and that's why the trade with the New Jersey Devils made so much sense to Conroy. You know, Kevin Ball is a 23-year-old Westerner. He's a defenseman, left-shot defenseman. So in terms of age dynamic and kind of renovating on the fly, they think that he's going to be a good add in Calgary. But they do have to add some pieces to that blue line. You know, what are they going to do in goal? You don't replace Jacob Markstrom. Is Dustin Wolf ready to take the reins officially 
with some help from Vladar, are they going to have to add experience? Again, the belief across the National Hockey League is that there is going to be good goaltending available, certainly in that 1A to uh, a backup role. So I can see Calgary looking in that direction, but the Flames probably aren't going to do much more heavy lifting at this point. Their focus is going to be on the draft, and I think it's important to note, Gino, they've done real good work uh, in terms of, of adding to their draft arsenal. Uh, I just checked, and the Calgary Flames have six first-round draft picks in the next three drafts. So they're expecting that uh, they're going to get some quality players to better the future of the Flames moving forward. Hey, we're just over a week away from the opening of Free Agent Frenzy and Dregs. It sounds like you're going to be a busy guy. He's our hockey insider, Darren Dregger.